Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and talk about the motion of circular orbit. So, just imagine, imagine we have the good old first right here, and we have a big, big mountain, Mount Everest, or whatever mountain we want. And on top of that mountain, let's say we put a giant cannon that launches a cannonball. So, the cannon has some velocity V it's launched with. Let's say it launches with the velocity V, it goes right about there. Cool. So, it looks like it would travel horizontal distance like that. To the cannon right there, Earth looks pretty darn flat at that point. Now let's say we launch it with a little bit more velocity. Oops, it goes all the way there. And then, I bet you can guess, if it has enough velocity, it can make an orbit all the way around. So cool. So, and it, I just think about it, it's going to keep going tangent. And notice that as you kept increasing the velocity from the first second to the third um, line, all of a sudden, it's like the cannonball starts to notice the curvature of the Earth, while for a smaller velocity, it doesn't necessarily notice that the Earth is curved. Cool. So I went ahead and wrote down a couple of our points. One more thing. So it's basically like satellites that move around the Earth are basically in free fall as they move around. Because I think of it like, okay, the velocity is tangent. The velocity is always going to be tangent. And then the Earth pulls it back in. Velocity is tangent. Earth pulls it back in. Velocity is tangent. Earth pulls it back in. And it keeps on going around in a circle. The cool thing is, once you have a satellite in orbit, it'll pretty much go in orbit forever, assuming no air resistance, all that good stuff. And there really isn't too much air resistance out there, so it'll keep on going. Last thing I want to talk about, let's say you launch the cannonball with a really big velocity. I bet you could guess what will happen. If it's a big enough velocity, it will escape. Big enough velocity, it'll escape the gravitational pull of the Earth. So again, if velocity, velocity is big enough, Object escapes Earth's gravitational pull. And it is not in orbit. It is not in orbit. So let's go ahead and now solve an example problem involving this. Okay, so I encourage you to go ahead and read this problem yourself and then draw a picture. Label out with masses, velocities, all that good stuff, and then check back in on the video. Cool. Okay, so now that you've done that, I'll go ahead and draw the picture here. So it looks like we have the good old Earth, mass of the Earth, which I know that the mass of the Earth from my handy dandy table is 5.97, 10 to 24 kilogram. Let's see, we have a weather satellite, um, which is 1,000 kilograms. It's a circular orbit, so let's go ahead and draw it going around 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So this is 300 kilometers, which I know I oftentimes want things in meters. So in meters, that's what, 3 times 10 to the 5th meters? Cool. Uh, we'll have Earth's radius, that's good to always label, which I know Earth's radius is, what is that? That is 6.38, 10 to the 6th. Cool, I'll put that on my picture. 6.38 times 10 to the 6. Cool. Okay, so we want to find the speed, period, and centripetal acceleration. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put here. We want to find the velocity. That is the first thing we, that we want to find. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and look at it. So it um, looks like to me, I'm looking at circular motion. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram acting on this rocket. So I want you to draw what forces are acting on, not the rocket, satellite, sorry. Um, draw the forces acting on the satellite. Again, I should have written this in the problem, but let's assume no air resistance. Okay. Only force like acting on it. There's nothing touching it. There's a long distance force, long range force, force of gravity, and that is going to pull it directly inwards. So there's just force of gravity. Okay. So let's go ahead and set that up. So just force of gravity, we're setting up F net. So we're looking at the satellite, and let's go ahead and set up F net. However, it's moving in a circle, so I'm going to call it F net C is equal to force of gravity. Okay, so there's two equations I can use for force of gravity. I can use mass times acceleration due to gravity, or I can use this Newton's law of gravitation, like the FC equation with the G, M1, M2 over R squared. I want you to think about which one to use. Okay, now that you thought about it, it looks like to me, we don't know the acceleration due to gravity at this point. If we did, we could totally use either equation, but we don't. I'm going to use F big G equation, but either equation should work, depending on what we know. So I'll go ahead and put that down. So it's G times what? Mass of satellite 
times mass of the Earth. Those are the two massive objects divided by the radius squared. Again, that's going to be the distance between the centers of each thing, which I went ahead and labeled that on my picture. So that's R. I'll go ahead and call it capital R. Cool. F mix C, so that's mass times centripetal acceleration, or V squared over R. And again, that R is the distance from where you are to the center of the planet. Let's think about what mass this is. Is this the satellite or the Earth? Oh, that's going to be the satellite because that's the thing moving in a circle. Cool. So I have that. Now let's go ahead and cancel some things out. Oh my goodness, I love when things cancel. Mass of satellite cancels out. That doesn't matter. We have one R on this side, two on the other. So one of those will cancel. So we are essentially left with V squared equals G mass of the Earth over R. Cool. So the velocity of that satellite as it moves in a circle is going to be square root of GME over radius. Let's go ahead and just plug in numbers now. So 6.67, 10 to the negative 11. Mass of the Earth, what? 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. Radius. That is, again, our total radius, which is going to be the sum of our two distances right here. So the distance above the surface of the Earth plus the radius of the Earth, which when I add those two together, I get 6.68 times 10 to the 6th. And again, that is the sum of 6.38 times 10 to the 6th plus 3 times 10 to the 5th is 6.68 times 10 to the 6th. So be very, very careful with your numbers. So 6.68 times 10 to the 6th. Cool. And I get 7,720 meters per second. And that is going to be my speed. Cool. So now let's go ahead and look at the last bit. We want to find the period and centripetal acceleration. What I want you to do, try this yourself and then check back in on the video. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at speed. We want to find the period. This is for circular motion. I know essentially speed is distance over time or velocity, distance over time essentially. Let's see, the distance to go around in a circle is circumference, so that's 2 pi r, and the time to go once around, we call that our period. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. Velocity, I know, is 7, 7, 2, 0, equals 2 pi times what? 6.68 times 10 to the 6 over period, and the period I get is 5, 4, 3, 6 seconds. So it takes 5,436 seconds to go once around. Cool. Let's go ahead and look at the last one, centripetal acceleration. So let's see. That is v squared over r. V is 7720 squared. R is our 6.68 times 10 to the 6th. And I get 8.9 meters per second squared. Cool. So I want to think to ourselves, what does this 8.9 meters per second squared represent. Hmm, think about that. Ooh, that, very interesting. That right there, come up with your ideas and then check back in on the video. So the centripetal acceleration there is just essentially what the acceleration due to gravity is at that point. So that right there is just g at that point. And that kind of makes sense. G on the surface of Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. We're a little ways from the surface, so it'll be smaller than 9.8, but not too much smaller than that. Huh, physics is so cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching.